lecture series into hematologic emergencies in part two, which is patient assessment. We have learned that um, many of your medical diseases actually have very similar signs and symptoms. So it becomes often hard to really determine what you're working with without a good history. However, in most uh, situations with hematopoietic systems, um, you may be able to get a good history from either the patient or the uh, patient's family members. In general, patients with disorders of the hematopoietic system may present with a variety of complaints and physical findings. Patients with infections, uh, white blood cell abnormalities, especially ones that are immunocompromised and prone to infection, or transfusion reactions may present with febrile symptoms. Also, patients that are experiencing um, blood transfusions, they may experience uh, febrile non-hemolytic reactions as well. So you want to watch for that in patients that are refusing transfusions. Most hematopoietic disorders are chronic conditions that present with acute exacerbation when the patient is exposed to additional stress, such as infection or trauma, and treatment in most cases is supportive. However, in other situations, such as case of a person that's having a vaso-occlusive crisis uh, in sickle cell um, and in severe pain, you're going to have to provide more of an ALS-type treatment. We do want to make sure that we note any type of life-threatening signs or symptoms, and we also want to particular attention to those life-threatening signs and symptoms and figure out what the underlying pathology is, if it's at all possible. Um, our assessment begins, as it would with any other patient, by assessing the patient and taking our standard precautions. Alterations in the hematopoietic system may present as life-threatening bleed, overwhelming infection with septic shock. You may see things uh, that are related to uh, hemorrhagic shock. You want to form a general impression on these patients, though. Also, with this, you want to perform cervical spine stabilization if necessary. Don't dismiss a pain complaint of the spine just because it could be a manifestation of a disease process. Even if the person has sickle cell disease, it may not be what is causing the current problem, although sickle cell disease is a very painful exacerbation. Always perform a thorough, careful primary assessment. Perform a rapid scan of the patient with your general impression. How does the patient look? Sick, not sick, critical, not critical? Are they anxious, restless, or listless? Are they apathetic or irritable? All these signs could be due to inadequate circulation due to some type of hematologic emergency. Assess airway and breathing. Patients showing signs of inadequate breathing or altered mental status should receive appropriate oxygen. Depending on the severity and their uh, oxygen saturation, you may have to give different types of oxygen support via different types of devices. However, remember that SpO2 is not always the greatest indicator of their perfusion status, especially in things such as anemia. With our circulation, we want to manage life-threatening conditions. Obviously, if they are bleeding, we want to control bleeding. Increased pulse rate may indicate a compensatory mechanism. Look for signs of shock. If hemophilia is suspected, be careful not to wash out clots if fluid resuscitation is necessary. And watch for signs of acute blood loss. You know this is paleness, pallor, weak pulse, hypotension, any bleeding of unknown origin, signs of hypoxia or shock. And again, use caution with fluid administration to avoid washing out clots. And if any of the severe signs or symptoms, as mentioned previously, are shown, you want to make a good transport decision, which is going to be rapid transport to the appropriate facility. Obtain the patient and sample history. Past medical history is going to be very important in this situation here. Hematologic disorders may present with multiple symptoms that at first glance may seem unrelated. An example of this would be pneumonia in a patient with sickle cell disease or abdominal pain in a patient with polycythemia. So in patients with particular areas of abdominal pain, this could be indications of other disease processes that we will talk about a little bit later. Look for all the things that you see here. Changes in LOC, vertigo or dizziness, feelings of fatigue, weakness, syncope, 
dyspnea, chest pain, changes in pulse rate and rhythm, are they coughing up blood, visual disturbances, muscle pain, stiffness. With your history taken, you want to determine are the complaints part of a larger disease process or are they unrelated? Is the pain isolated or felt throughout? Ask if they've experienced any skin changes, bleeding, liver problems, pain for unknown reasons, GU or GI problems as well. Your secondary assessment may be performed on scene, in route or not at all, depending on the severity of the patient. All of the examples you see in Table 24-3 are common findings with blood disorders. However, if you do, some of the, do see some of these more extreme findings, you need to pay particular attention to the patient and their overall status. You want to reassess quickly and frequently. If you have determined that this is a critical patient, you must reassess every five minutes. Inform the hospital staff of any type of patient history, present situation, assessment findings, and any of your interventions, and make sure that you have thoroughly documented your results. General emergency care for patients with hematopoietic or hematologic disorders will include oxygen, which is determined by the severity of the patient's condition and respiratory status, fluids, particularly isotonic crystalloid solutions in the field, Management of electrocardiogram because of the electrolyte imbalances that could occur due to bleeding disorders. Transportation to the most appropriate facility. Positions of comfort. Pharmacology, which is not only going to include fluids, but will also include things such as analgesia. And also psychological support because some of the disorders that we will talk about can be extremely taxing on the patient. This concludes part two of the hematologic emergencies lecture.